Hey folks, thank you for joining us again for another exciting episode of YOMO. This is the Year of Much Cool Learning Podcast. Uh, so today is a brand new week, so we're excited to get back to normal after the, you know, kind of like weird week from uh, the holiday, the uh, birthday of America. So um, we're trying to figure out what our fifth Fido is, um, <laughs> you know. <so, laughs> what do you say for this, Chris? So uh, this book is uh, it's called it's called the Fifth Vital. Um, it's by the author uh, Mike Majlack. I, I think that's how you say his last name, Majlack. Sounds good um, enough to me. <laughs> so the uh, I gotta make it crystal clear, like who Mike Majlack is. I didn't know it until I read this book. I had no idea who this person was. No idea, like zero zero idea. Uh, never heard the guy's name. Had no idea about his life. Had no no idea right at all. So this is uh this is who Mike Majlack is. He's um uh he's he's um uh what's the guy's name? Uh Logan Paul's like like sidekick um basically on a YouTuber. Um uh so he he dates like porn stars apparently. Um this is his his ex-girlfriend is uh whatever this girl is and she's like a porn star or something like that. I don't even know. Anyway, and he's and he's um Logan Paul's like like right-hand man on he's his co-podcast um uh, host of of whatever the show that Logan Paul does, right? So this is who Mike Majlack is. Just so you know, like oh, no okay. idea. I I had no <laughs> idea who who this person was. Like I mean, I, just to be crystal clear, like the the content of the book sounded interesting to me. Um, so I I um uh, I don't know how I stumbled upon this one. I think it was from um, you remember Dreamland, the book about uh opioid, the opioid epidemic. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, yeah. I think it I think it was like maybe one of those books they recommended after. You know, you get like, you know, if you read this, like you should check out this or whatever. And uh, mm-hmm. um, uh, I think that's how I came across this book. But um, this book is called The Fifth Vital. Um, uh, and um, the reflection of this one is, is always stay busy, but busy with the right things. So if just to put it in perspective, The Fifth Vital, um, uh, it's it's a it's um, that that's that's a, a another word for saying pain uh, management. Um, so uh, the fifth vital sign, like doctors and, and providers. Um, you know, I've always looked for like four different vitals that they would like measure somebody to measure of like mm-hmm. somebody's health, like in like a, a you know, in like the hospital mm-hmm. or something along those lines. Right. Well, um, back in the, I don't know, the eighties or whatever it was like, uh, some, something like that. They, 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 they society medical, the medical world deemed that there was a fifth vital sign that they should be monitoring uh, at all times. And that was pain. Like, what is your pain level? And and I don't know if you know how to do this stuff. The only reason I know is because I worked at HC1 and, and I told you about the whole like tox advisor thing that we were doing where we were marrying up the PDMP and the and toxicology results and, and um, uh, uh, you know, basically for the opioid epidemic and trying to trying to find ways to help doctors be, uh, you know, monitoring closer, closer monitoring compliance to what they're what they're actually prescribing and making sure that people aren't taking illicit drugs and how they were measuring up to their prescriptions, whatever. Anyway, I, I happen to know a lot about this world in general, but um, uh, the 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 fifth vital, um, uh, sometime back in the eighties, I think, or something like that, maybe the nineties. I can't remember exactly when it was, but this is when like the opioid epidemic really kicked off. Um, you know, people said pain matters, um, and monitoring pain and managing pain and measuring pain matters. So what they would do is they would take these um, uh, scale of one to ten questions of like. What's your pain level? Uh, it's a uh, it's a seven. Uh, okay, great. Like you know, uh, like that that here here here's some opioids. Uh, you know, and then they would come back the next time. They're like, "What's your pain level now?" And they're like, uh, "Still seven. They're like, oh, "Okay, well here's some more opioids." You know, like I mean, this is this is basically like, I'm no no joke. This is this is actually there was like written scores like they would just keep of like that's how they measured your your pain threshold. They would just ask a patient like, "What's your pain right now?" And they would say, "It's this." And they're like, okay, you know, here's, here's some, here's some drugs. Uh, like this is, this is exactly how the pain management industry has always worked um, uh, since, since this, since pain was deemed the fifth vital. So I thought this was an interesting title and I, and I immediately knew what it was when I saw it. Um, mm-hmm. uh, and then I, then I read the guy's story. So this is um, his story is about um, when he was in high school, uh, Mike Majlack uh, um, took Oxycontin for the first time. He was he was you know a middle class suburb kid from you know white you know upper middle class middle class I don't know what you want to what his family's wealth was or anything like that from from Milford Connecticut and uh, uh, 
he and a bunch of his friends got into got into oxycontin just like a lot of other kids in there in the 90s you know he's he's like my age i think so this is uh this is very apropos for the whole opioid epidemic he was on the front end of that like this is when you could get these pills all pill mills all day long you know just like we talked about in dreamland and you know people that were you know getting prescribed these things just out of nowhere and then they were selling them to their friends and you know oxycontin is like really really serious shit too um and they were and it was billed as something that it was not that serious so uh his, him and his friends decided you know i like the way i feel when i take this stuff so we're gonna take it and they got addicted quickly um and uh, uh you know by the time that he had graduated from school he was he was a full-blown like you know uh opioid addict basically uh that led to a series of the next i don't know probably decade of his life i don't i don't i think it says in the, the, the description here Mm, how old was he? Said while his peers were graduating from college, buying homes, getting married, having kids, leading normal lives, Mike was snorting oxycontin, climbing out at cars, cars at gunpoint, burying his childhood friends, and unable to escape the news of addiction. He eventually, like a lot of addicts, you know, lost the trust of all his family and friends. Was out, you know, completely alone, and his life was spiraling down into a, a shit show. Um, I mean, he he was probably going to die, you know, uh, like a lot of other addicts in this world, and and. Uh, um uh you know luckily for him he clung on to some hope and and dug himself out and um ended up getting a job um and that job turned into something that he started doing some marketing for um uh you, you know that company love sack um uh you know the like the love sack the sectionals like the big beanbag chairs you know what i'm talking about mm -hmm. uh look they're they're i i have one actually in our basement they're, they're awesome uh um, like these the all these things are they make sectionals and stuff now they're like super comfortable mm -hmm. but like but this is like what they were originally made for they were called love sacks like they're mm -hmm. like these massive like beanbag chairs are like super soft and and huge and you can just kind of like, like a bed <laughs> it is it's like it's like a bed i have one we have one in our basement it's really comfy actually uh and uh so he somehow convinced this is when like love sack was like a small company he somehow convinced uh, the owner of that company that he wanted to be his like social media manager. And this was before like social media was really a big thing too. So um, uh, he ended up, you know, I don't know how he got this job, but he got this job. Like he, <laughs> he was sober for a little bit and uh, the, the the owner of the company gave him an opportunity and, and he um, ended up meeting Logan Paul um, doing some like uh, uh, finding out this, this is when Logan Paul was kind of starting out um, his, his like YouTube journey and, and um and they ended up working together um you know at love sack and and you got them to do some like cross promotional stuff and it really helped to generate a ton of leads and things like that for the business and then he ended up becoming really close with logan paul and logan paul ended up then you know becoming really close with him and then he asked him to come be his market man mar marketing manager and uh and then you know life ended up snowballing to where it is today where now he's like a famous influencer youtuber you know podcast host whatever like that, that's his story basically so he was a drug addict on on death row basically like falling apart to now he's you know uh, um uh, sober and 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 you know living a, a life where he's he's um enjoying it but he's he's still definitely you know uh it's kind of remarkable where he's where he came from and where he is now so i mean that's that's kind of the story right that, that makes you know you you, yeah, you following yeah. along with me here okay yeah so so now that that's out of the way um once again i had no idea who this person was <laughs> like so like like i i did not read this because i was like oh mike Madschlack. oh my god like i i love i love logan paul like he's like he, I, I don't even know who logan paul is i mean i i know that i've heard the name i think he's a boxer doesn't isn't the guy that boxes or something like that like or is that jake uh, paul I, I, is that is that his brother i don't know i don't know it, yeah i don't know <laughs> I'm not, uh, YouTube isn't a thing for me. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't really watch like YouTubers and I don't know, like I've heard like Mr. Beast, you know, like I've heard that guy's name before and I'm like, what the hell does he do? But I guess he's like, makes a shitload of money. Um, I, I don't know, man. I don't, I don't know who these people are. So like, I'm not a, I'm not a, a YouTuber. Um, uh, Basically, but, but you're not generations. <laughs> no, they're not really. I mean, hell, I, I walked into my, my friend's house. Um, He has, he has a 10 year old or 11 year old now. And I remember when he was like six, I walked in and he was watching like, um, like it was like Jake's toy review or whatever. And this is like, you know, five years ago or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm like, what the fuck is he doing? And and he's like, oh, he's watching YouTube. And I was talking to my friend and, uh, and he, and I was like, what do you mean he's watching YouTube? Like, what, do you, what is he watching on YouTube? And he was like, this is like what they do. Like, like they just, they just watch kids playing with toys, like and shit. And I'm like, I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, you know, I'm like, he just sits there and watches YouTube. 
on your TV? <laughs> like, I'm like, what? I, my mind was like blown. I was like, what What are you talking about? Like, kids just watch YouTube for like, like, you know, I, I don't know. That's not what YouTube was for me. Like, YouTube was like, I need to learn how to how to change my my plumbing, you know, my toilet, like fill valve or something like that. I go to YouTube to like watch a video or something like that's, that's what I use YouTube for. I don't, I don't, I don't go on there to entertain myself. So anyway, now I'm just rambling. Um, all right. So the reflection, always stay busy, but busy with the right things. Um, so the, uh, over the past few years, like you and I have explored this topic a lot, but like, um, I think, I think it's becoming, you know, like with with the molecule of more dopamine nation you know a lot of, a lot of other you know things about addiction when you hear the first word the first time you hear most people when they hear the word addiction what what do you think of when you hear the word addiction like just naturally good or bad drugs alcohol bad right right bad right exactly like i mean we we think of we're, we're trained to think of his addiction as bad like mike majlack was an addict um you know i i used to smoke cigarettes like i was an i was addicted to smoking i didn't like it like i didn't, I didn't want to be a, a smoker you know like i um uh, a friend of mine, a close friend of mine almost died from crystal meth. You know, um, he was, he was an addict. He was, he was in the same situation that Mike was in, you know, where he's selling crystal meth to some really seedy ass people. You know, he's living from night to night, doesn't know where he's going to sleep, living out, sleeping out of his car, you know, almost killed himself, wrecking his car multiple times, was chased down at gunpoint multiple times. I mean, like, like this, this, my, one of my best friend's life was exactly Mike Majlack's life. I, 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 I saw it, watched it know exactly what this guy was talking about which is why i think i was so compelled by this story honestly um because it kind of kind of hit home a little bit for me with one of my like closest friends i've told you about that story before um and uh um yeah and, and it sucks like addiction sucks like it's bad we we hear it we say bad you're an alcohol addict you're an alcohol addict you're an addict you're a you're you're a drug addict you're a you're a gambling addict you're a you know i don't know what other addicts are out there you're a smoking addict you're you're a um workaholic you know or something like that i don't know right like we don't we don't ever we don't ever say the word addiction and say it with a positive connotation usually um uh, however um for me like and i don't know if you're feel the same way but my 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 feelings and, and opinions on addiction have changed dramatically through this journey um i think that we're all addicted um uh to to to, to everybody is an addict in this world in my opinion like it's either you're addicted to stuff that's uh, pointing you toward your purpose and you choose it, or you're addicted to shit like this, where it's just out of control. You don't have any, and and you, literally it's, it, it chose you and, and, and you're just riding the wave of, of something else's addiction or somebody else's addiction in this world. Um, and, and that's, that's kind of my stance on it now. Like addiction can be positive and negative. Like it's, it's a, it's a spectrum, you know, um, in my, in my personal opinion. Uh, so you can challenge me if you want to. I know I've, I've had, many um uh why are you yelling um night podcasts you know with my friend uh james baker who is uh um a clinically trained psychologist and uh, or not psychologist he's a clinically what, what do you call like nurses that are the ones that are like not they're not they're not rns but what's above an rn uh 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 nurse practitioner Yes, he's a nurse practitioner at a a, a clinical psychology um, uh, mental hospital or whatever you call those things. I don't even know. Like we're we're the the crazies, you know. Or at you know, mm -hmm. like um. So uh, and 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 he also used to be um uh, uh an addict of um um Adderall. Uh, he went to rehab for it. Um. Uh. So like like when he hears the word addiction, he he like he and I have argued about this so many times. This this goes back to the Alex Honnold um uh debate of like is alex honnold a, an addict um uh for rock climbing fuck yeah he's an yes, addict for rock climbing is. like yes. i mean 100 but 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 my friend james is like no he's not an addict like that's not that's not that's not addiction chris he was like addiction has a name and a in a in a, te in a definition and and labeled you know like that's addiction like and i'm like i'm like i don't really care what you want to what you want to label it as in your psychology books or or whatever and your in your dsm you know, diagnosis, you know, codes, like, I don't give a shit. Like Alex Honnold's an addict. Like, I mean, like you and I are addicts. Like, I mean, fuck, like mm -hmm. we're, look at us every single fucking night. We're on this thing, you know, like, <laughs> like, I mean, like, I, I don't want to, I mean, tonight I'm, 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 I've had a lot to, to do today, you know, I'm, uh, and, and I'm uh, like, in a, in normal worlds, like I probably should be like, I'm going to go sit down and watch some fucking TV because I'm fucking tired. I've done a lot today. But no, I'm like, no, get upstairs and, you know, let, let's go, let's go, let's go 
feed our addiction because it's because we like it, you know, <laughs> like um, uh, professional uh, athletes addicts. Oh, for sure, a hundred percent. I mean, like uh, without a doubt, like Michael Phelps is an addict. Cook's an addict. I mean, Tiger Woods, is a fucking addict. I mean, well, he's a he's a literal pill addict, but he also you know was a addict, you know, uh, golf addict, you know, for sure. Uh, I mean, that guy almost killed himself trying to play golf. Like, I mean, he he literally was his body was falling apart, and he still was trying to play. I'm a tennis addict. You are. My fucking shoulder <laughs> doesn't even work right now. And I'm, and I'm out there. I played a match yesterday with a, a friend of mine that I know that I can't beat. You know, it's, it'd be hard for me to beat him even when I'm fully healthy. But I'm like, I'm so out there trying to fucking play him. And I'm like, every shot, I'm like, ah, oh, ah, oh, you know, and, 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 uh, and like, I mean, that's that's addictive behavior, you know, like, I mean, that is that is addict behavior. Um, uh, so anyway, my what what my. Uh, what my point is with all this though is our mission with with Clubbany is uh, to live a balanced, sustained, uh, um, sustainable life. You know, harmony and balance, right? But here, but here's here's the thing: is we all know that pure balance doesn't exist in this world. Like, it's not possible. Like, people don't just wake up and they're like, "Yeah, I'm balanced." You know, like balance takes effort, hard work, and effort um, to to find the right kind of combination of stuff uh, that. That allows you to pull yourself back from the extremes to 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 keep yourself in this in this forever tug of war, you know, um, of 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 going after the stuff that you really love that aligns to your purpose, but at the same time, you know, can can kind of keep you, you know, on the on the spectrum and and trying to keep you in that in that center space, right? Um, and uh, and I think Mike Majlack in this book said said something toward the end of it when he was talking about his recovery um he was like one of the things that he learned the most during his time as an addict to now when he was in his recovery and he's been you know sober for many 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 years now he was like look it's it's not much different he was like i just had to learn to always be busy but to stay busy with the right things this time versus the wrong shit right and like if you want to live a balanced existence i think that is the best advice you could ever give anybody you still have to be an addict um uh, even though that doesn't sound balanced you have to balance out your addictions, you know, <laughs> um, like to find this, like this, like happy medium point, uh, you know, a little bit, I guess, uh, um, to, 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 to maintain that yin and yang, that the, the extremities of your life or whatever, uh, and, and make sure that it's pointing your addictions are pointing you toward the direction you want to go in life. Um, cause if you're doing that, I think, I think you'll find what you're looking for eventually. I don't know where you're going, but I know how we'll get there. Right. And that's always stay busy, but busy with the right stuff. Meaning, the habits and the addictions that'll point you toward where you want to go. So that, that was my reflection, I guess. Hmm. Yeah. So this book reminds me of the, the, uh, the book running with Sherman. Go on. I don't, I don't know where you're going with this one. So, yeah. <laughs> so you remember Sherman, right? There is Sherman, the, the hero of the story, but there's also right. the supporting cast, the, the, the kid. Oh yeah. I remember my kid, right? Zeke. Yeah. What happened? Zeke, yeah. Zeke, okay. What happened to Zeke? He, he was struggling yeah. until he found the right thing that he was meant to, is meant for. Yep. He started to thrive in it. So to me, I agree with you. Everybody has an addiction and you should be addicted to. But the caveat to me, in my opinion, is that it's the how that, that matters. Because the how it determines whether or not the how aligns. Because to me, whether you're addicted to alcohol or you're addicted to drugs or any other thing, you're not addicted to the drug itself. You're addicted to the the effect of the drug. Right. So in, in essence for me is I think when you're taking these drugs, you are you are addicted to the escaping of the pain. Whatever the pain that you are in that state, you are you're addicted to the 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 relief of the pain. So when you right. take the alcohol, for example, right? Because you are so whatever, some state you're in in for example, reality. Your reality is too much pressure. You think about this and people tell you about this, whatever. When you, you know, go into this buzz of an alcohol, it numbs these things. You don't think about it more. It's not, it's not bombarding you with the with this pressure anymore so you you addicted to the relief of the pressure the relief of the pain right. and so the addict is good it's always to me addict addition is always good it's just how are you using what is the mean for you to be addicted to if the means is to be one of these things because this thing isn't really 
giving you the alignment. Because to me, in the end, everybody has their own, I guess, center of balance. Because your center of balance may be different from my center of balance. Because, for example, I am more introverted than you are. Then for me, is I would rather prefer to be more, my, my center of balance is more on the center of uh, introvert side, like, you know, maybe 80, 20, 7, 30, whatever, like, right. like more of that. And I, I feel more comfortable versus you, you know, if you are being constrained and, and put into uh, a house of rest, right? Because you are an outgoing person, it strains you more. So you're way off your center of balance than I am mm -hmm. and I would be. And so everybody has the center of balance. And I think to me, the center of balance is it's purpose. Is what in, it is. In, it, yeah. It, so, so, yeah. But it's the true, thing is, it's true. Meaning and purpose is the center of balance. Like, like that's 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 kind of. Uh, sorry, you, you, were, you what you just said helped me to refine my own thoughts when I was talking before. Of your addictions should point toward your purpose and help. And purpose is at the bullseye of balance, in my opinion. It, it, meaning, purpose, whatever you want to call it, that is the heart of balance of a balanced life. So your addictions should drive toward that. When your addictions drive you away from that, like that's when chaos ensues and when it gets right. All so crazy, it's right? all yeah. boiled down to alignment with right. who you who you are, what your purpose are. So right. your means, your method of addiction, your method of getting the balance has to align, right, with your purpose. Right. And your purpose is who you are, right? Exactly. You you can't escape from what you can't change your DNA. You can't just say, hey. I don't like my height. I'm gonna. I I wanna wanna be this this height or wanna be this weight or wanna be you know this color. You can't change your gene. Mm -hmm. Who you are is who you are. The only thing you can do is aligning your methodology with who you are. If you do that, then addiction serves you. Right. If your addiction doesn't serve you, then it's gonna be far away from the center of balance. When you have a center of balance, you can be off balance. Right, when when you're far away from your center of balance, far away from your quote unquote purpose, right. then you can be off balance. When you're off balance, you're gonna have this hard time, this this quote unquote the the spiral out control phase, yeah. right? Because you think about it, hey, why are you just spiral out control? control? Because you're not you're not in balance. Right, right. You, you're, 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 you're going exactly, away from where you want to who you are. You know, yeah. Exactly. So go back to what I'm saying is it's all boils down to doing things that is aligning with your purpose. And when you do that, you don't have to be worrying about anything else because the thing is, the, 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 you, you are in center of balance. You're gonna want to be there, right? You don't want to stray off because the only time when you're trying to run away is when, you're, when you get to this, this point in your life where when you're being pressured, you're stressed out, you're in pain, well, mentally, physically, and spiritually, right? You're in pain, you want to escape it. That's why you're trying different many things. And the escape of it gives you a sense of saying, hey, if I'm a, a far away from what I don't want, meaning I'm close to what I do want in theory, right? Because that's right. why drug addiction say, hey, because I'm escaping this, this, this pressure, this pain, that means that I'm getting closer to my balance in theory. But, you know, it doesn't happen like that until you really find the things that you are really, really, Align with align meaning hey you are you have the affinity for it meaning right. that you're naturally good at it you're naturally gifted at doing that particular task and, and when you and do it, that it it, it 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 just it makes you it fit it just fit I, I i don't know how else to say this but like it just it's like a puzzle piece that fits into your life right like like dr like like drug addiction alcohol addiction most of the time maybe somebody like i don't i don't know if it's ever existed but like uh, maybe somebody it was somebody's purpose you know to, to, to i don't know uh but like that's usually like a misaligning puzzle piece in in people's puzzle right like it's like i want i want to do the, all this stuff but then i do this you know it's like this puzzle piece doesn't fit right like it's when 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 you when you have these you know as as my friend baker would say like like i mean he would just probably call them habits like i mean i can call him you can call them addiction or whatever like hell there's a book Atomic habits, like call those atomic addictions for all I care about, you know, but like, that's, but that's, that's really what it is, right? Like, I mean, these are, these are, these are habits that'll, that move you toward and fit into a nice little puzzle piece, right? Like, I mean, it just, it, it's, it's, um, there, there was, there was something else too that you said that I, that I, 
I, I, I honestly, I can't get out of my head for a second. Um, the, uh, uh, the, the pain relief of, of addiction, right? I don't know that, that, that this right now, what we're doing isn't a pain reliever for me. You know, I mean, it is, it is like when I, when I it go, is because thing when, is when, you, when the... you're working, when you're working and people that actually do QBR is pressure. And so when right. you're talking about not things that you like to do, that you are relieving that pressure, you believe in that stress, because right. this is why when you get out, get out to get out in the day, we get energized because we're talking about things we want to do. Hey, let's, let's form a company that. Uh, we want to have, you know, a, a, a CS that during the middle of the day, just like the French right. dash, right? We talk about things we want. And that basically escapes us from the reality. Say, okay, I have to do these things, whether I like to do it or not, because my quote unquote boss tells me that I have to do it. For whatever reason, I don't know. I mean, it's just arbitrary, you know, just taken out of his ass. Hey, you know, we I shall have this kind that. of quota <laughs> for this month because that's what I decided. That's what I would pick. When, when for we, no rhymes or reasons. Before we jumped on this call, um, so we're we're this is the first quarter that we just finished as a with this new like model that we were doing for like this more like hybrid sales development slash AE model that we were doing. Um, uh, our sales operations are like a joke. I mean, like honestly, like it's almost like comical how bad our sales ops are at our at our company. And um, um, and I I I know what we need to do um to fix this. But 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 I also know that like it's 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 a lot of me right now. It's going to be should be a lot of manual like guerrilla you know labor to to get some of these things done that need to be done. And and to be honest with you, I don't want to do it. Like um, <laughs> I, I I I don't like I I I just I I keep bringing it to people's attention, and I'm like fix it, like you know like and and then they don't fix it, and then I'm like oh well, they didn't fix it. I'm not going to do it. I can't do it. I can't change it other than like doing a bunch of Herculean efforts you know, that I don't want to do. Um, so I just keep letting it linger out there. And I don't really care because I just focus on what I need to focus on, which is leading my team, being a good manager or being a good leader to them, uh, helping them to grow, develop, you know, blah, 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 blah. All the other stuff, the outcomes, the performance stuff, I don't really give a fuck. Like somebody else, I, I know at some point in time, my boss really, really cares about these things. And at some point in time, she's going to, you know, like ask me for details. And and when she does, I scramble around and I get what she needs to get, right? Well, we came to the end of our quarter um, and, and to your, to your exact point, we're talking about this as a pain reliever, like two, a week ago, I reached out to her and I was like, Hey, like we got to do our new comp for um, uh, this is the first time we're going through the, the comp reconciliation process for uh, the past quarter's performance for this new model that we were doing. And I was like, how do you want me to do that? She hasn't really told me. Uh, and, and she was like, well, you should already have all this information ready to go. And I was like, I, I don't because we don't have, this information like right the hand. and i was like i will i will have a give me a day or two and i'll and i'll compile it and i'll send it your way so i did so i sent it to her on thursday last week or friday uh thursday late thursday night and uh and she she finally replied to me on friday like in the middle of the day and she was like she was like well did you do this this and this and this and i was like she was like thanks for the info but like like yeah, i need i need more info and i go well i don't have that no i that process you're asking me to do is going to take time like you know i i can't like just whip that out you know whatever anyway so all day today, in between my one on ones and everything, I was I was trying to like fucking do, do a shitload of extra work to like verify the information needs to be verified and chase down all these different people in the organization and like all this crap, right? And uh, and and uh, and she and I didn't I I couldn't get it done yet. So um, because uh, I'm still trying to do what she asked me to go do, which is like a lot of manual work, you know. Um, and uh, so she she reached out to me tonight as I was you know at at soccer with Luca. And, um, uh, and, and I was, and she was like, Hey, like, we're, do, do you have this, this, this completed yet? Like from what I asked you to revise it on Friday. And, uh, and I was like, no, I don't. Um, I, I, I don't know what else to say. I'm still trying to figure out a few loose ends, you know, and I, I really am It's probably gonna take me a whole nother day, maybe another two days, you know? Um, and, uh, cause I'm, I'm having to like manually go talk to like 20 different people, um, uh, uh to go co to verify this stuff. Anyway, I say all this to say, I get this like message from her. It was probably the first time I've ever got a message from her where it was kind of, it was a bit of a lecture, you know, on, on like Slack about like, you know, how like to be a good effective manager, you have to know what your team's performance is at all times. And you should always know this stuff and blah, 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 blah. And like, this should be a but lot. She <laughs> 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 but she doesn't. But she doesn't. It's like. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Um, well, like I, 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 there's so many things that I could get into like, you know, the, the 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 irony of all ironies of this of this of this statement 
but to, to your point of, <laughs> of, of what you were just saying before about uh, two things, like um, uh, it went through my head as soon as I saw that one was, I could tell her the truth as to all the shit that's going on in the background as to why this is preventing me. But she doesn't want to hear that. And I know that. Like, I, I know that if that was me on the other end of that, I'd be like, those are just excuses, Chris. Fix the problem. Fix, just get it done. You know, like, it's it exactly what I would be thinking about to somebody else that I just sent over mm. activities and tasks that I don't think that they care about. Um, and clearly they didn't care about it because I, like, I don't. I don't fucking care. Like, you know, uh, but I'll do it because you're making me do it. She cares about it. She's really good at these things. Like, she loves managing the numbers. I don't. I love leading people. Like, that is that is what I really like to do. And that's fine. Like, I got you know, and this, this is, this is not clubbing. This is, this is corporate America, right? So like, sometimes you, you just have to do shit that you don't want to do, sadly, unfortunately, even though you shouldn't, but you do. But my, what I'm getting at ultimately is like, I, I thought long and hard about how I wanted to respond back to her, to her, her Slack message to me as I was at, you know, a soccer game with my son. Um, you know, part of me could have been like, Hey, I'm at a fucking soccer game with my son. I'm doing a lot of fucking work right now. I'm trying to scramble around because you, because you asked me to go do this stuff. Like, like chill the fuck out. I'll figure it out. You know, it's, it's, it could be answer one or a, a statement one. Statement two mm -hmm. could be, okay, you know why this is all fucked up? Because like, I've been telling you for three fucking months, our sales ops are shit. And I've been talking to our sales ops manager who I've, I've proposed many different solutions, written SOPs, told him exactly what I want to do with this. And he hasn't done any of it. So I just said, fuck it. Like I could, I, 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 I like I could, I could start blaming a million people like in a reply back to her. And, and I, and I, and this is why this journey matters to me because I, I stopped and I was like, you know what? I don't care. I just said, you know what, Anna? I was like, you're right. Agreed. I, this should be something I, I got done. Understood. I'd love your guidance. Like you want to talk tomorrow about it or whatever. And she, she was like, yeah. So like my point is I didn't, I didn't take like some, some bitch way out of it. I thought, Hey, I'm gonna go talk to True in a little bit. Like, I, I don't want to deal with this. Like, I'll just I'll just let her tell me what tell me what's right, what's wrong. Like, I'm not gonna I'm not, I, I don't care. I don't care. Like, just what do you want done, and I'll just get it done because I don't really care. Because what I want to do is go back and lead my team. You know, like that's what I care about. You know, like what just just tell me what to do wrong. I'll fix it going forward in the future. And and like that's it. And then I get to go relieve my pain doing stuff that I like to do. I'll go back and hang on with my son. I'll go back and we'll you know maybe we'll go play some pickleball together. Go play some tennis if I can or whatever. Go talk to True. Like. Like, you know, like this is my pain reliever of choice. You know, you know what I mean? It's like, right, right. And, and, yeah. And years passed in my lifetime passed. I would have been like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, how are you going to fucking tell me that I'm not doing? Do you have any idea what is going on that you can't see? No, you don't. Like, shut the fuck up. You know? Like, you know? Uh, yeah. But, and, then, but, and then you have a sleepless night because nothing right. bothers you. And, and to, 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 to let your brain marinate on this information, it just, you know, giving you a migraine. So to me, that's pain. And to say, hey, you know, if I can I say, care. you know, I don't care. I have things that are more important to me. I can talk to to True. I can spend time with Luca. I can spend time doing the things I love to do. It stops the pain. It stops the bleeding. It, it stops it the, 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 the pressure. And to me, that's pain reliever. And you, 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 you're basically putting pain in its corner. And to it's me, a, that can be addictive. It's incredibly addictive. Like, I, I mean, I, it, it's so much so that, like, I don't even care what she had. Tomorrow when I go talk to her, I'm just going to say, you know what, Anna? This hasn't been a great process. Like, I can do better. Like, do you have any advice for me? And if you do, tell me how. Like, and if you don't, like, then I'll just try to go fix it as fast as I can. And, and I'll figure out a new process going forward in the future, you know? But my, I guess my point is, is like, this is anti me you know like this is this is like when, when you don't have a pain reliever to th that goes towards your purpose like all you want to do is fight you know like and it's like it's like you just want to fight like you know like it's like, like well, the uh, thing is you, you you're trying you're trying to stop the pain right yeah. so the, the 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 stop the pain there's i guess a lot of people without another option they go into the pain and go head to head with it yeah. and trying to Fight. because the thing is when, when when you say okay i'm going to fix this right if, if you don't have this pain reliever like this this yomo or, or the other thing that you do that kind of say, hey, you know right this you, you you'll be you'll be trying to solve that problem okay? i'll be working right now yeah guaranteed to stop I, to, to get to get away from the pain because you hey yeah. i need to get this this thing done which i don't want to get done but i have to get done but i need to get it done so you're going to be working all night thinking about it. Like like I said, you could have a sleepless night because you'd be thinking about how to solve yep. this problem. 
the reason why you want to sell the product is where you can stop the fucking paying boredom. I, I, don't, want, I don't want my boss to think I don't know what I'm doing. I don't, right. I, don't want, I don't, I don't want somebody, I don't want to fail my team, you know, like I don't want, I don't want her to have no confidence in what I'm able to do. Like, you know, like, like that's, that sucks. That hurts. Like, you know, like, I mean, especially given the fact that's that I get like call, zero, zero feedback. Pain. Yeah, it is. It's painful. <laughs> it's like, pain. I mean, it's, especially cause I get no feedback. Like, I, I mean, I talk to her like once a month, Um, you know, like, I mean, she's, she's incredibly busy. Like, I mean, she's got rightfully or wrongfully, she's, she's managing, she's like personally managing, like, I don't even know. I mean, I, I don't even know how many direct reports she has. It's insane, you know? And she, I mean, like she's a machine when it comes to numbers. Like that's, this is what she loves. Like you want to talk about a beaver must dam. Like, like she is a numbers maniac, like loves it, lives off of it every day, all day long. She, she knows everything that's going on around her and can like, you know, report on it. And, and is like a great project manager. This is why she does what she does. And and uh, um, I mean, uh, I, I could suggest her that she need to add another number. Mine? No, that's just vital. <laughs> <laughs> to, every really report, yeah. to every direct to every direct report that she has, she need to ask him, "What's your pain level today? From zero to t- from one that's to ten, right?" Good question. And, and then say, "Okay, this is <laughs> this is my 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 oxycodone or you know Vicodin or whatever. You know, give us it." And then the next time. She talks to you again and say, how do you feel? And then she can prescribe a little bit more. If she's a numbers person, I would suggest that she put another number on her chart. The That's a great fucking question, man. fifth vital. Because I the mean, thing is, these manager, these these direct reports will have this level of pain. It's like, yeah. do I want to do this? Am I suited for it? Because the thing is, not everybody's going to say, hey, you know, this is my beaver must damn I'm, I'm, kind of I'm, thing. I'm, Doing you're, analytics, you're, you're, and, you're not a, and, and you're not a numbers guy, not right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're not a numbers guy, right? So, so for you, that's pudding tea. But it's for awful. her, that's eating eating cake, and she's comparing eating cake to pudding tea. Say, hey, you should love, you know, get, get your teeth full like like me. And to so, me, that's is why you have to ask to be vital. It's I, I mean I think that's awesome and I totally agree with you actually and I might actually ask my own team that because like this is the funny thing about me is like and she says you need to know your team's performance at all times I know my team's performance at all times like I talk to I, day, I, I, right? I talk to them every <laughs> fucking day like I like unlike unlike her like you know and I don't mean this to be a negative to her she she never talks to me she doesn't understand what's going on with me or not on with me she she can see a dashboard. And, and, you know, and whatever. And then we can, you know, if something, if I do something negative or whatever, clearly, like, then we can talk like, you know, but like at the end of the day, like I know through, through verbal words and listening to my team and checking in with them all the time. There, there was a book that I read. I loved this book. Like, honestly, I think I'm going to reread it because it's been a while since I, it's probably been six months since I read it. And it was probably one of my favorite workbooks that I've ever read ever in my life. Um, it was called the the nine lies about work, and um, uh, it was so good. Did you did you read that one, by the way? No, I haven't. Oh, it was so good. Like it was so good. Um, and um, and I one of the things that I absolutely remember most of that from a from a work perspective. Um, you know, they said if there's one thing that you do as a leader of other people, if there's one thing you can do to 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 give you a massive advantage over everybody else, whether you're good at it or not, is spend one hour or spend spend have a one-on-one with with each one of your direct reports every single week never miss it never miss it that should be the number one thing and the if you did only one thing like do that like because it is true like you don't even need to do anything just show up and talk like and let them talk like i mean it's 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 like you'll you'll you don't have to do anything just show up like you know and be there for people like you know, i get it you're busy i'm busy we're all fucking busy like i mean but like show is up it? for the people <laughs> and who is it like, like i mean the thing is is can you imagine us doing this podcast if you were like i was like hey true i'll record my thoughts you record your thoughts and we'll just compassion compile compile it together and we'll, we'll we'll call it you know call it a day you're just like that's not a fucking that's not fun. I don't want that. Like, who gives a shit? Like, I want to talk to you about like what we're talking about. Like, what that doesn't do anything for anybody. Like, what what the fuck does that do? Like, you know, just if you even if you never said a word and you just let me li- talk for an hour, I would probably be like, man, that was really helpful. True, thank you so much. And you'd be like, well, you know, I learned something. Maybe like, you know, I'm, I'm glad I could help. Have a good one. You know, I'm like, I'm like, man, this guy's an amazing manager. Like, you know, how to win friends and influence people. Choose them choose the best you know (laughs) you know what i mean like it's like just fucking show up like you know like but you want me to go give you that tip like no 
she won't do that because I've asked her this before. Like I've said, hey, you you want to do something for me? Like let's have a one on one every single week. And she was like, well, I I don't know if I can commit to that. Like I got a lot of other things that I got to do. Like let's just talk whenever we need to talk. And well, we don't need to talk very often. It turns out, so like we don't talk. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, you say you know, we don't need to talk until something happens. Mm-hmm. Guarantee something will happen that's, because that's you don't exactly. talk. <laughs> exactly. You're exactly right. <laughs> this is where we are now. I say hey. Because, like I say, you know, by by the sense that you're telling me that she says she have a post on every single one of her reports, it sounds to me that she doesn't. That's why no, no, this thing comes through a dashboard. Out. Through a dashboard, she, she, she But that that is she through a dashboard. That's not. No, I, I understand. You're you're right. Like I understand. Like <laughs> I, I I understand. Look, and and to be clear, like she's not wrong. I could be better at at at, at managing to numbers to people. I I. Like I am, I go out of my way to not manage numbers. Like to be fair, like I mean, to to be fair to her, like when it comes to leading versus managing balanced equation, like I pretty much only focus on leadership. Ninety nine per ninety seven percent of the time, uh, managing to me is numbers and processes and whatever. Like I focus right. on like people management. you lead, right. things you manage. You don't right. manage people. You cannot manage people. Exactly. You just don't. If if you think you can, you are just fooling yourself. I agree. So, like, my you can boss, only inspire people. You can really like because eventually they they won't they won't stay there. You know that's why people quit all the time. They, they quit a job and they, they change all the time because it's you, true. If this is if this is my actual boss, <laughs> that, that she, she's my she's my she's my fill in boss right now, right? Because she she fired my boss. Um. Uh. Um. Uh, so so I'm I'm technically reporting to to a level above that I should be, that I shouldn't be reporting to, so to be honest you, with you. So you're yeah. reporting to a, a, a dotted, uh, a dashed uh, line, right? Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like she, like, 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 I, I, and I don't want this to be negative to her because I think she's really talented. I, I really do. So um, I think, I think she's very smart. Great. Right. And all that good stuff, but um, she's an, an incredible manager. Like, I mean, that's, that's what I will say that is she's an incredible manager. She has her finger on the pulse of the numbers of the business at all times. She's really, really good at that. Um, uh, she is awful at understanding the finger of the pulse of the people of the business. You know, like like this, the, I, 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 I would have, if she would talk to me every single week, I would, and we had an honest, open dialogue, I would have told her for the past three months that the, I, I don't, the sales ops that we have in place for this stuff is, is fucked. And I've told, I, and I, but like at this point in time, she doesn't want to hear these things like and, I, and i've and i've learned that like that i don't i don't i don't bring problems to her because she doesn't want to hear problems so i didn't bring it to her so now a problem developed and and you know shame on me or not shame on me but like you know it is what it is like she she spent three months not hearing about it because she said she didn't want to hear about it like you know like so i didn't <laughs> tell her about it so like so here we are you know <laughs> like, it's not like i didn't know this was going on like i mean like let's be honest like you know anyway to, your your point was this is a pain reliever because because and and I would have I would have been taking it out in so many different ways you know uh, and right now I don't I don't care I'm I'm pretty calm it's fine like hey look I'll fix it or I won't fix it like you can fire me or not fire me if you if you don't think that I'm good enough at managing up to numbers like that's up to you but like I don't care like I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty I feel pretty good about what I've done with these people and and and, and I'm happy with that so it's fine All right <laughs> that's that. All right. Anyway, all right. I want to go to bed because I got to wake up and be a single dad for the next four days. Um. Uh. So, uh, being a single parent sucks. I mean, it really does. Like, I mean, I, I don't. I'm sure you've had to do this many times in your life, especially you have four kids. But like, but like, it's it is not easy to work, do all the do all the per, do all the balance aligning activities of addictions to feed my own addictions to keep myself balanced and be a good parent. Um. You know. Uh. And also um uh you know still do everything keep everything else in order it is just it, it's hard man if i had to it's, do this it's yeah. not it, it's not easy it's uh mostly it's just sacrifice it's, you, you gotta do what you have to do yeah. um right. for your kid so for the most part you know like i said to you you know most of my i guess fatherly duty doing the the i guess 15 years it's just a blur because you know I'm I'm completely robotic in that area. It's because it's not something that I mean, it's not something that you are in the center of balance. Just no. leave it at that, right? It's chaos. Um, <laughs> chaos, right? The yeah. only thing that comes out of it is you know having your kid be 
healthy and and you know um that's that's the reward you get but that's yeah. but that's the that, that's the thing is you know that's the only thing that keeps you going but if without that i don't think anyone would last no no way no no way in hell man it's like a it, it's it actually does crack me up like like the power of parenting, the power of parenthood, like, like, you know, for me, like a, going a day without thinking about Amelia, like 50 different times is, is, is almost an impossibility for me. Um, uh, and, and I, and I don't want to not think about her. Um, uh, that's a part of my purpose. Right. But also like for Luca, because he's right in front of me every single day. Um, uh, it's really, really funny when you're not around him, like when he's at daycare or something like that, like right. in the middle of the day, I'm like, oh, I kind of miss a little guy. And then when he's here, you, I'm like, you, I'm you like, think God, about, man. Yeah, you think of him like every 10 minutes, like every, you know, it's like but, even he, if your your kid's in in a play date somewhere with a friend, like, you know, where's Luca? You know, where, yeah. where, where's this? Where's, you you will. But that's, that's the thing is, you know, to me, for whatever reason, we are compelled to have that kind of uh, behavior. <laughs> We like that, only remember yeah. the good stuff when they're away. And then when they're in front of us, we're like, you know, we just deal with the bad shit, you know, like, like yeah. they're, I, I don't know. I don't know why it's like, we almost just like zone out or something like that and just go to a different, like, you know, we are, we do, we zone out when we know? have to do all those stuff. But right. um, the, actually what I'm saying is the thing that keeps us going is the, it's the bond, uh, whatever you want to define that it's the bond you have with your kid right like, right. like you said you know if he's a daycare you could you kind of miss a little guy right and, and, you, and you think about him maybe like 50 times a day just because he's not there <laughs> right. it's like what's the oh yeah he's there. <laughs> yeah, you, you know, i mean hell i was even like you know felicia usually picks him up i usually take him to daycare and mm -hmm. felicia usually picks him up but i was at a certain point in time in the middle of the day i was like oh I, I'm like looking forward to like, you know, going to pick him up from daycare because I never get to pick him up from daycare. And I was like, uh, you know, I, I, I honestly, I was, I was going to like wait until like the last minute to give myself more time to like, you know, to, to keep working and doing whatever I had to do for the night. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and uh, um, I don't know, it was about 45 minutes before I had to pick him up from daycare. And I was like, I still had work to do. And I was like, ah, I'm just gonna go pick him up. Like, you know, like, <laughs> I was like, uh, <laughs> Uh, I mean, it, it is weird because you're like, oh, I could, I could have had 45 more minutes without him, you know, like, and, you know, it's like, no, I was like, I, 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 I'd rather just have him back, you know, um, yeah. I, I mean, fuck, did I tell you about when my, my aunt, um, we went to this Dave Matthews Band concert uh, two weekends ago, and uh, my, my aunt, uh, uh, Joanna, was watching Luca, and uh, um, we brought her over, uh, brought him over, like, Saturday, like, five o'clock or something like that, and um, uh, we were going to pick him up on, like, Sunday morning, and she texts us on Sunday morning. And she's like, Hey, um, uh, you know, I want to take him to church and like, you know, want to go take him play around like, you know, some park or whatever. Like, you know, she's like, is it okay if I just like take him back after his nap or something like that? You know? And, uh, and we were like, my wife and I both get this text at like, at like 8 a.m. in the morning. And we're, we were both like excited to go pick him up. And, uh, <laughs> and, and, and we're like, uh, uh, sure. Sure. Uh, I guess you can have him. <laughs> so this is, this is no joke. This is, the, the the comedy that ensued after that, we both sat around in our bed going, uh, hmm. what do we what do, we do now? <laughs> like, I, this is no joke. We we were like we literally were like, what 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 do we do right now? And uh and 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 she was like, I don't I don't know. And I was like, well, I was like, do you want do you want to go get like like brunch or something? You know? And she was like, ah oh, yeah, we we can we can do that. And I was like, then you want to go like like look at a car? You know? Because I know you've been talking about wanting to look at a car. You know? And and she was like. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea, you know. Like we, we can do that, you know. I was like, yeah, let's go, let's go to Broderpool, which is near my uh, my aunt's house. And I was like, we can, we can like, you know, be around them and like, you know, be be there to like go pick them up, like you know, right away or whatever. Like you know, we'll go to we'll go we'll be on that side of town, and you know, we're like, yeah, yeah, it's a good idea. So so we we go to brunch and we're we're like sitting around and and um and then we uh we hadn't we didn't actually realize it, but apparently all car dealerships are closed on Sundays, and I we didn't know that. So um so the, <laughs> so so around like. Like twelve thirty or something like that. After we get done eating brunch, we're like, we're like, what do, what what do we do now until like five o'clock? So we just like <laughs> wander. Literally, this is no joke. We like wandered around like near my aunt's house, like just walking up and down this thing called the Monon Trail, which is like a, an old railroad track that they that they turned into like a walking path that goes like like twenty five miles to the city. 
we're just like wandering around the fucking area, like like just looking at the clock, going, "Can we pick him up now? Can we pick him up now?" Like, <laughs> we, 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 we were so lost. I mean, honestly, like, I've never been that lost in my life because we we were not planning on on like you know giving him away for like for an extended period of time to somebody. We we're like just just watch him for like a couple hours and we can go to this concert and come back. But you know, she wanted to keep him. So it was, it was, uh, it was like comical. Like, like you, honestly, you feel like you're, you're fucking lost. Like, you know, yes. like you know, it's, it's, you're like, you know, I, I know exactly what you, what you go through. <laughs> it's, it's like, it's like kind of funny, honestly. It's like, it's, you don't know how to, you don't know how to live, you know, anymore. I mean, it's, it, it you I, know, <laughs> I, I, I honestly makes me wonder what the fuck I did before I had children. Like, I, I I'm like, what did we do? Like when we had nothing to do all day long, we were just could make up our own agenda all day. I'm like, what did we do? Like, you know, I, I don't even know. You know, I have no idea. Um, anyway, all right. Yeah. Let, let's let's, let's, <laughs> let's, let's, let's put a pen this one because I got. I'm gonna go to bed. Um, <laughs> the question we can leave for everybody is: uh, Are your addictions pointing you in the right or wrong direction toward a uh, balanced life? Um, so uh, think about that. I, think about I.e. Yeah. purpose. <laughs> I.e. purpose. Uh, yeah, that's right. We should call balanced life equals purpose driven life, you know, equals meaningful, you know. Well, purpose is a center of balance. So to to be in balance, you have to be on top of the center of your purpose. I mean, you you yeah. are doing exactly what you are meant to do as per your gene expression. Exactly. And your addiction should go and funnel you toward that, you know, uh, like if you're a beaver, you must damn. It should be a I mean, like like you say your addiction to your kid right like right. once you say hey and what am i going to do now that my i think you you're not doing anything other than circling around and waiting anxiously right. for the time <laughs> to come to pick up your kid and right. you have one kid right okay and kid. so well, to me two, yeah. my, two kids so to me it doesn't matter how many kids you have right. you're going to be in the exact same place and that's what drives you that's in your gene you cannot right. get away from it they're always they're always at the center of your fucking life, you know. I mind, you know, like you can't you can't you can't get away from them, um, and that's a good thing. Yeah. Uh, yep. Yep. Uh, awesome, man. All right. Well, uh, well, thanks for the great conversation as always, and uh, giving me pain relief uh, for the night. And uh, <laughs> I'm gonna go um, go to bed. So. Uh, yep. Enjoy your night, everyone, and we'll see you tomorrow. Sounds good. Good night.